Ready? Yeah, I'm ready. Let's get started. So th thank you very much for joining me. Uh, good evening or good morning, depends on where you are, everyone. We're here today to record another podcast, and I think it's a cool one. Um, we are connecting to India and to a project that is it's quite, it's quite new, but it's getting quite a lot of traction, and it's obviously um, also because of the topic. Um, and um, I'm happy to have you here. And before I, I ask you more things and talk more about you, why don't you just tell us who you are so people get to know you? It's better than if I introduce you. Okay, yeah. So first of all, I would like to thank you for inviting me here because you have created a very nice platform where we can share our ideas and grow from each other's ideas. So thank you so much for having me here. Uh, my name is Avni Prasad. I belong to Jharkhand Ranchi. So uh, it's uh, Ranchi is a tier two city in India. And I have uh, just graduated from uh, Sri Ram College of Commerce. So it's the uh, best institution for commerce and economics in the entire Asia. So people generally expected me to land into an investment job or a finance job. But from the very early uh, childhood, my parents, they used to say that your life is not defined by the bank balance you have or the kind of designation you have, but it is defined by the number of people you mold. So that is how social sector uh, influenced me. And uh, after graduating from the college, I decided to pursue my career in social sector. And um, you you just started this project, right? So uh, let's let's probably just tell people what project is, and and you can just walk us a few seconds about it, so we can then okay. dig into it. So uh, the name of my project is Project Sparsh, and Sparsh is a Hindi term for touch. So uh, basically, in India, people are not very vocal about things like periods, things like sex, or things like private parts. Mm -hmm. So, uh, according to the survey and everything, we came to know that 83% of the child sexual abuse uh, victims, the people who have abused them are the people that the child know and the child trusts. So how will a child get to know that how to react in that specific way when the child doesn't even realize what is a good touch and what is a bad touch? So I basically believe where the education system fails, the responsibility of youth begins. So that is how we have created Project Sparsh. So I ideated, I started it single-handedly, but now we are a group of 50 people doing, it, do, doing this job. So this project goes on various levels. First is we go to each and every schools, be it a public school, be it a government school, be it a slum or a town. And through a well-designed way, we interact with the student and teach them what a good and what is the difference between good and bad touch. So it's a well-defined process by which we do. On the second level, we conduct parental workshops because uh, pe life has become very busy and there are very few parents who can who has a who have a heart-to-heart -heart conversation with their children. And since these uh, things are generally done by the people who the parents trust, so it becomes very difficult for the child to go to the parents and say that this is happening to me and this so and so uncle is doing that to me. Mm -hmm. So basically, the parents should be the one the child should trust the most. So we conduct counseling sessions for the parents. And on the third level, if we identify someone who is already suffering from, from it, we try to counsel that person or we try to reach their parents and take the person to the counselor because touch is an impression which you carry throughout your life. And India is in the phase of demographic dividend and we don't want it to become a demogra demographic disaster mm -hmm. because those people will grow up into broken adults. So that is the reason we started with Project Sparsh. Which, which is... And, and and for the record, so I know your age and I know you are young. Um, yeah. You could have been probably doing a couple of other things, as you said, and you are spending time explaining people what is a good and a bad touch. Um, Alani, help me out. Um, I'll, I'll, and I, you know, you mentioned your family, but how did you come up with this specific topic? Um, and I know in the end, we we're going to talk a little bit about it. I know that 
there is there are some um, sociological issues uh, yeah. in, that of course have to do with culture have to do with um, history and and we're not here I'm not here at least to judge that uh, but rather to try to understand and try to 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 do an impact on it but why child abuse why did you come with child abuse type of type of um, uh, okay upbringing? so uh, for this I would uh, like to share a bit of my story yeah so uh, it was uh, during the college time that I was uh, physically abused with a knife and I was thrown at a construction site Okay. And uh, later there were other kind people forced things on me. So that had a very negative impact on my life. So uh, since four years, yeah, it's been four years. I was diagnosed with PTSD and uh, depression. And similarly, my, uh, there's a friend of mine whose uh, uncle did that to her for, I guess, four or five years. And she's still suffering. So because uh, as an adult, even as an adult, I couldn't manage that really well. I was on medication. I didn't talk to people. So last four years was very difficult for me. So similarly, thinking about what if the same thing is happening to a small child. So that is, uh, that is how, since I could connect better to it, because something similar, not something similar, but something on the same line was done to me. So that is how I came up with child sexual abuse. Okay. So just a, a remark, because who listens to this podcast knows that I have Milo and Amy, uh, cats that sometimes like to join the podcast. So if you hear the noise in the background, it's just because they're just walking around and I can't get them out. Um, and, and, I, and I don't want to make it less serious at what you said. Um, it's just for, yeah. very important to you. And I think we talked about it. Um, I'm a very... I, for me, mental health, it's something very important to be taught. So I, I, I myself, I struggle with mental health for quite a long time. I'm, I have a general anxiety disorder um, uh, diagnosed. I have, I have suffered depression at the age of 20. There is a lot of history in there. Um, and, and so it goes straight to me, to my heart, when I hear stories about mental health and people struggling with that. And therefore, first, before we even talk about anything else, thank you very much for for bringing it up thank you very much for talking about it is not not everyone is always feeling comfortable by talking about it and i think if we don't talk about it it won't get better um yeah it won't get better and even the other people won't get the strength to share it even this is the first time i'm sharing the story because uh, in india mental health is something which is not talked about often i tried to convince my parents uh, four years back that i'm not well i need help but uh, they basically, uh, they basically couldn't understand what it is. So I was not treated well when there was time. So that is why something which could have been settled in one year dragged for four years. Yeah. So after college, I had to take a gap year. And uh, for, for me, I've always been a very bright student. Like I have topped my state and I've been in top few students in the entire nation. So for such such bright student, taking a gap year, it almost uh, shattered my confidence. I was like, I had no hope to like live. So that was the phase which I went through. And slowly and slowly, my parents are also understanding about mental health. And after Project Sparsh, we are also working on a complete uh, on organizing the largest conference on mental health in Jharkhand because there is no such conference organized here. Okay, so if you need someone to talk about it, I can go there and also talk about it. Um, uh, thank you so much. <laughs> you know, a um, few, few years ago, I was, I was in, in Bhubaneswar. So I, I have quite a lot of friends in India, and I already mentioned that uh, Bhubaneswar is neighboring to Jharkhand. Like, we share a boundary. Yeah, so, um, but I also have in Mumbai, in Delhi, in Bangalore. So I, I have worked with India for a long time. Um, and therefore, I, I made a lot of friends. But there is something that I learned in India, um, and in Bhubaneswar probably more because I have um, people where I relate to on a daily basis that come from there. Um, you still have, and I make this disclaimer, I'm not judging the culture, right? But you still have a quite long way for people to understand um, first that child abuse or any kind of abuse isn't right, even if you are doing it in between a couple or a, a, a husband and a wife. 
exactly that talking about sexuality is not a problem but a need yeah and, uh, probably more important um that if we don't respect the the children and the woman and the the, the different genders and and races um this is just getting worse and worse in terms of in terms of um spreading negative behaviors right yeah um so i'm i'm, I'm happy that we are talking about it and um, and once again i'm this is nothing to do with the with india itself i think it's a problem that we have in a lot of places in the world um so you, you go to a lot of schools i mentioned you mentioned that and i've seen of course uh, in your projects yeah. um, how is the reaction because you started quite recently you have a lot of traction a lot of people is following you i i'm i have myself seen that uh, uh, okay yeah so reaction uh, the school people they are very supportive but the others uh, they they have been positive as well as negative reaction some people are uh, like some people including some relatives are of the opinion that uh, you are a girl child and you have taken up, up such a serious issue in a tier 2 city which is not vocal about sexuality or which is not vocal about mental health so basically people will target you so basically take down this idea don't work here go to some metro city and work there where people are more uh, accepting to the ideas but the thing is where people are more accepting to the ideas they have they have something to deal with that themselves but people need me here people need me in ranchi so basically i cannot bring down that idea here just thinking that i could be at a risk and on the other hand other people are very supportive the schools are very supportive like we open the like we uh, we just did um, four five schools in uh, i guess it's been just one month and we have addressed thousand students thousand thousand students and uh, we have just opened up for february and we are already booked by four schools so basically the world is going towards technology so people asked us to shift towards a video kind of thing and reach people but the kind of relation you develop with the child the kind of personal touch they get when you go there and we, when you speak out your heart so that creates a very different impact so that is why we have created a team of uh, we have a workshop team which have four people which includes me ipshita sogam and preeti so we go to each and every schools and villages and we perform a small skit so uh, the skit is based on interaction between two children of class 3 or 4 so basically the ch- child could connect to that skit and then we have different games in different different innovative ways by which we teach them what a good and bad touch is and children have children are very happy even some p- principals have approached us saying that this child has become silent all of a sudden or his parents need help so that is how we are connecting to more and more people so schools have been very supportive to us yeah so um i always find and i i tell i tell you honestly i always find super uh, interesting that you guys call it and you guys I mean general <laughs> you call it tier 1 tier 3 tier 2 cities and i only heard i already heard that before and i, I It's, it's, <laughs> it's for me very, very strange type of categorization um but it's interesting what you said so so you have people re- telling you that because you came from a because you come from a tier 2 city it's not no it, it's because uh, yeah because people are not if you go to a metropolitan city so mm-hmm. people ha- people people are vocal about these issues but here in rachi people are not vocal about these issues so if you go and you use a word it's a uh, by the time you use sexual abuse the people will run off from there because that's something you cannot talk about in public so that is the reason people want me to come down because uh, i will be targeted they they say that i am being targeted so um, yeah but the thing is if a small place requires you you need to stay there and help people out Yeah, and, and for the record, a, a small place in India, it, it means likely it's something like a million or two million people. No, it's more than that. It's yeah, 30, exactly. So just to be yeah. the amount of people that you are reaching out is not just is yeah. not a, is the amount a, of people we are reaching out is real huge. Yeah. yeah. So even in online and offline both platforms. Yes. So, um, 
and, 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 I, and I kind of understand it. So I, I remember once in, in Blue Nashville, I was having a conversation with the, with the, with the team there. And I, I usually tell them that people like you and people like me, we, we are to a certain extent privileged to be able to do things, to get a good job, to have a fairly decent salary, to have an, a decent lifestyle if you, if you aim for that. But we all have a social responsibility anyway, and we shouldn't yeah. and we shouldn't forget that. And so, in Bhubaneswar, like we have in Orisha, it's a state a, a district. I don't know what you call. Um, there is a there is a, a very very big um, a spectrum of understanding and spectrum of education in between the the metropolitan areas and the the, the rural areas of of that area. And I and I and I guess this is the same all over India. Um, yeah. What is the level of understanding? And, and I know schools say that we, we, they are willing to talk to you, but how, how do you feel that uh, the parents and the schools are prepared to talk about this? And what do you think is the journey to get them better prepared to talk about this? Because you can talk, the question is how much they can listen. Uh, basically, school, uh, if you go about schools, so the private schools, uh, whose principals and other uh, other authorities who come from other backgrounds or other places, let us say metro cities, who understand the need. So they are very accepting. On the other hand, if you go to the schools, which are not that well off, or if the people are not like exposed to such topics, so they somewhat hesitate in coming forth or supporting us. Because... Uh, but we have uh, we have gone to two or three slums, and even tomorrow we are going to a place known as Pahari Tola here, which is a small slum here. So people are appreciating; they want their child to learn. And even we are going to Mahila Mandals. Mahila Mandal is a collection of uh, women mm -hmm. uh, who sit together, discuss their issues and everything in India. So they have in the slums; it it is a kind of organization. So basically, in most of the cases not most of the cases but uh, yeah quite a few number of cases the father is uh, the abuser mm -hmm. so in that case how should the mother go about it so we are reaching out to mahila mandals for the same like how should mother raise their voice against it and, and i think you you brought in i don't i don't know if it is the father or the mother i, I, I don't have the data but um you brought something that is very important for people to know and uh, one of the targets of our project is also to raise awareness through messages like yours. More than 80% of the cases where a, a child is abused yeah. it is through someone that it is known for the family. Um, and therefore, um, by not listening to these stories, by not at least spending time understanding this, we are taking a risk that this is happening just um, around you and you don't know it. And, and I, th I think someone was Nisha when I made a podcast with her about domestic violence. Um, she said, okay. she said, um, domestic violence, it's, you have, you know, you always know someone that faces that you just don't realize it. Yeah. Um, and so I'm not saying that we all know someone that is facing child abuse. What I'm saying is that there is a very likely chance that we maybe know it, but we don't know how to identify that. Um, and that is so even every in India, yeah. If even in India, many of the cases go unreported, but despite of that, in the reported cases in, in India, every 15 minutes a child is sexually abused, every 13th hour a child is raped, and one out of three boys and one, uh, one out of three girls and one out of five boys they face sexual abuse of some form or other before they reach the age of 18. So despite of data's being underreported, this is the data which comes up. And it is very so, scary, right? Yeah, it's very scary. And teaching children about this, being vocal about it is very important. Um, you, you mentioned something that for me, it's, it's, I think is relevant to talk. You said where, where, the educational, where the educational system fails, it's where the youth responsibilities this, start. I yeah. know you have a different wording, but that's what you mean. Yeah. Um, how do you think the educational system is failing? And, and now I'm talking specifically in India. Why do you think it's failing? You think it's because they're not addressing? Is it because they're not doing the right thing? What, what is your view? Yeah, on so I would say uh, 
I would say uh, when we conducted a survey, no school has taught, uh, uh, taught the child about good and bad touch. No parents have taught the child about good and bad touch. The child doesn't know what a private part is. Plus, children are uh, exposed to the chapter called reproduction in class sixth. And in most of the schools, that chapter is skipped. Mm -hmm. That chapter is given as a homework. So mm -hmm. basically, if something this serious is happening to them, the child should know what it is. Because only then the child can come and tell you that this is happening. What if the child grows old and broken and then realizes that something this grave has happened to them? So, oh, and maybe, maybe this is just a, a wrong opinion or a wrong information, but I think in general, in, in, in not just in India, but in a lot of countries, sexuality is still linked to pure and only reproduction purposes yeah and and that is that is where this overall thing starts right um and well it is not where the abuse starts but it's where the the understanding of these topics start because there is a very lot there is a very big misconception about this and this becomes a taboo of course and therefore parents don't feel comfortable to talk with their children about that yeah but 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 just for the record this is not just in india and um, my, my parents never talked to me about sexuality and I'm from Portugal. Um, so I, I'm, I'm very happy that the mother of my, <laughs> my daughter has a very open conversation with my daughter about it. And, and we obviously don't, don't overload her with information at the age of six, but we try to make sure that she understands uh, how the things work and she understands that there is no problem to talk about it. What is, yeah. what is, Something for me, I would like to also get your view and, and, and you are getting into that more is how do you get parents, not just to understand what is good and bad touch, but to change a mindset of understanding sexuality as a whole um, and, and more. And that is where I think it's probably a different type for a different podcast, but Alicia, the co-founder of this project keeps bringing it up. How do we understand that woman is entitled to the same level of sexuality as a man? As a man, yeah. That's so a double. Yeah, so basically since uh, our team, so it's uh, it has become a youth movement in Ranchi. Project Sparsh is a youth movement. So if we, are, we with our level of experience go and talk to a parent, the parent will not give that much amount of heat as a proper counsellor would. Mm -hmm. They would give to a counsellor. So we have uh, talked to a few of the counsellor to help us in this uh, this. Uh, like this area of ours mm -hmm. so that we are conducting a proper formal sessions with the parents where the counselor is addressing like they are they are being taught the abc of parenting in india people are very adamant people are like we have already raised seven eight kids so why do they need to uh, need to study about abc of counseling uh, of parenting so uh, so yeah, we are trying our part in changing that conception. So let us see how it happens. Like it, it's just uh, like one, one and a half month, as I said. So maybe a year down the line, I'll be in a much better state to explain if the mentality changed or not. Yeah, the, the reason I wanted to talk to you right away, even though you just started now, is, is exactly because you just started. So I, I'm, I'm very curious to see what is your mindset and what is your motivation? And maybe in a year from now, a year from today, we, we, we do the same. And I would like to know how did that go? Because, and I see with the volunteers as well, uh, for example, in our project, and, and then I'm not saying that they are to be blamed, but a lot of people get very excited in the beginning, but then yeah. you start facing and then challenges. Out. Yeah, then right? yeah. And then it's out, yeah. And that is a big, that is a so big... Even when uh, this challenge came up in our organization, I would say two to three days back. So there were 100 people and uh, out of sudden, like 50 left the group, like left, left, left. So uh, on the days where there are media coverage, on the days where there are on, they are on uh, papers and all, so everyone is very excited. But when it comes to like working on the ground, actually committing your time, so very few people actually have that heart to do something to change the society so but even if we are left with few few bunch of people we are enough to create a change that's so, most yeah. important 
when it, if you, if you allow me and please stop me if I bring any topic that you don't feel comfortable to talk. I would like yeah, to focus a little bit on you. Um, yeah. Because I think that's a, that's a, that's a very inspiring uh, character and person that I, I at least I uh, have enjoyed to talk and I've already been in touch with you for a while. Um, so you, you, you mentioned about your, your, your issue and, and the, the impact it has on your mental health. Yeah. You mentioned that your parents are now getting to um, a better understanding of what, is the, what does that mean. But tell us about this journey. Tell, tell us about how, how, how did you even get your parents to get really understanding of the impact that this has on your, on your uh, um, mental health? And also, how do, you, how do you share with others the fact that issues like this can have a massive ripple effect in the rest of your life? It's not something you heal in a month. Yeah. So basically, uh, if I start with my journey, I, uh, I have been a very bright student academically. I never second the class. I was always the topper of the state of some or other prizes every time. So no one ever expected me to be sad about anything because they thought that I had everything they wanted. So then I went to Delhi to pursue my graduation, but there some of the unfortunate incidents happened, which uh, I cannot share in an extent, but yeah, there was a bullying inc incident and then there was a phys uh, there was physical abuse incident whereby my hands were cut and I was left at a construction site. After that, there were other times when people tried to force them on me and few of the other cases. So because of uh, these incidents happening one after other, I went on uh, like I went from one traumatic experience to other traumatic experience. So I couldn't handle that very properly then. So I stopped going to college. So when I stopped going to college, my grades started deteriorating and I was a topper throughout. And now my grades were da going down. So there were two things which were happen happening simultaneously. I was good at something and now I couldn't do that anymore. A point came when my brain stopped responding. I couldn't read or write. So the trauma went over and over again. And I couldn't read and write. So at that time, I tried to approach my parents that I'm not able to do this. But they were like, you have been doing this all throughout your life. Try again, try again. You'll be able to read it. You'll be able to write it. But the brain was not functioning. It was not my fault. So they continuously tried that I... I uh, so there's uh, so they tried that I compete some of the really nice examination and add another flower to my CV because my CV was very well decorated from the very beginning. And other people never realize that why I have been so sad all throughout because they have just seen the rosy side of my story. They never knew that this thing has happened to me. And then people started taunting because I took a gap year. In India, a gap year means uh, you only take a gap year if uh, people think if you have failed if nothing is working out, you take a gap year. But that's not something. You also need time for yourself. You need time to heal. You need time. You need to give time to yourself so that you become your previous self and do other stuff in a more precise way. So that is what I did. I took, I took, I guess, two gap years. I took two gap years whereby I was, whereby I heard a lot of stories from the relatives, from the friends. There were messages filled on my WhatsApp, like, what are you doing? We are, uh, we are earning this much or we are designated at this place and we didn't expect you to do nothing. So that was really very demotivating. So at the time when I needed support, I was demotivated. But then I heard a quote somewhere that you don't drown by falling in water, you drown by staying there. So that is how I started working on myself. And then I designed this entire project alone and we are doing, I guess, quite well. Yeah. So yeah. for the record and for all your friends that have um, got nice jobs and nice uh, salaries, um, you have done a lot more than they did. 
Uh, and that's never let anyone tell you otherwise. So I graduated at the age of 26. Uh, I had no bachelor until I was 26. Um, and um, I don't think I have, I'm so unsuccessful in my career. So for everyone to listen that is listening now, and usually I don't make opinions, but I think I have to make an opinion. Um, as Chris Park said, success is not dictated by the number of likes or your salary. Success is dictated by how happy you are with yourself. Yeah. And how happy you, you are with what you do. It doesn't matter if you make a multi-million salary, but you have nothing to hold on in your life. So, Amani, Even any- I have no idea because when people hear this podcast, uh, in India, people won't really accept it. Even my relatives will say that, why did you disclose this part of your story or why was this shared? But the thing is, I want to come forward because there are people who are suffering from this and if even one life is inspired by my story, that would be a success that I achieve in my life. Yeah. And that is, that is, um, what is, this is what the project we have created is about, but that's why I usually say I'm a very selfish approach in this project. And that is if, if no one else listens, I have the pleasure to talk to people like you and, and, and learn about it because, um, Maybe when I was when I was your age, I was not even thinking about it. Um, I was just too much drowned in myself and complaining too much about my own life. And I think, um, and not necessarily, I did right away something uh, after getting out of it. So I think um, anyone that is, um, and I know that in India we have a lot of pressure, so in terms of society, in terms of success, and and, and I deal with a lot, I have a lot of people from India in my, my teams and. There is a lot of this pressure of continuous promotion and you have to get the next level quite fast because there is a very com- competitive market around. Um, yeah. Just for everyone to listen, guys, we got to stop that. <laughs> that yes. is useless. Yeah. It is irrelevant. Um, you don't have to be promoted every year to be successful. Please stop it. Uh, <laughs> but let's stop putting pressure on people. Um, I, I think we are creating such a, an unhealthy environment no, please, for... You just have one life. I just have one life as Avni Pasad. You just have one life with yes. Rui, uh, as Rui. So we need, we need to give all the love and compassion to ourselves because down the line, we, we are our greatest commitment because we have to live with ourselves for the most of the time. Yeah. So we need, we need not be so hard on ourselves every time. Yes, and, and but, but it's not just you. Uh, it's, it's, it's our parents, it's our grandparents, it's our relatives, it's our friends. This peer pressure of the society for a success that is measured by impact, by promotion, by salary raise. Dudes, there are things more important in life to do, and helping to build, bring awareness on child abuse is way even, more important even, than the salary. Uh, one of my friends, they, come, uh, they uh, commented a few days back that what are you getting out of Project Sparsh? Uh, how much are you earning? So I replied, I'm getting love, respect, and compassion. Yeah. So, so the baby, yeah. Amani, I, I need to um, unfortunately limit the time. Yeah. Otherwise, we get too long, and people unfortunately has a psychological trauma to see a lot of minutes in a podcast they don't even start. She's also, yeah. <laughs> by the way, that's ridiculous. Uh, we don't do disposable content, we do valuable information and stories. If it takes long, it's because it's meaningful. Don't stop listening because it's long, it's stupid. Um, usually, I ask people to leave a, a one last message. And one last message means if, if, people list, if people are there listening to this podcast, and I'm pretty sure a lot of the people that is working with you will listen because they like your story. How would you finalize it? And I think you have listened to our podcast, so probably you also thought about it. Um, as a yeah. way for people to remember this conversation and say, you know what, damn that's the thing I want to take home and that's what I'm going to do now to change my life and change someone else's life. I basically want to share two things. So uh, first is make your life an expression of happiness and not the pursuit of happiness. People think that I'll do this, then I'll do this, then I'll do this and then I'll be happy. 
so basically each and every day you should do something which makes you happy and the second thing which i would like to share is that why to be toxic when we all are capable of giving love yeah that is a <laughs> i have to share that one in my wife lane um thank you very much fantastic conversation i think it's so inspiring that someone that could be at this stage and doing a lot of other things is, is spending time bringing awareness of something that is out there everywhere um you, you inspired me and i'm not saying that just for the record i'm saying that because it's really true um and i'm i'm hoping that irrespective of through our projects or some or somewhere else more people follows your project more people gets inspired by your project and we do more and more thank you for yeah. taking the time to talk to me and for opening and coming up thank you so much thank you so much for providing me this platform thank you